This video is brought to you by Monster Insights. Monster Insights makes it easy to double your traffic and sales by showing you exactly how people find and use your website. Just click on the link in the description below to get started. The first 200 people to use the coupon code WPBVIP will get 50% off Monster Insights. Hey there. Throughout this series, we've been talking about SEO and how to improve your search engine optimization on your website. One of the biggest parts of SEO is having keyword research done properly for your website. And all that means is making sure that the keywords that you're using for your website are the same keywords that people are using when they're searching Google. Since keyword research is very important, I'll cover a few different ways that you can do keyword research for your website. This particular video will be covering Ahrefs software, but in other videos, I'll also do SEMrush and a couple of free tools that you can use as well in another video. So let's get started with Ahrefs and how you can use it on your website. Okay, so let's take a look at how to use Ahrefs for your site. We're gonna go ahead and go over to Ahrefs. This is the tool that I prefer and I use it for my personal sites. They have a $7 trial that you can do for seven days and that's plenty of keywords that you can pull together to write for your website for the first few months or even the first year. And then consider getting the subscription once you start getting more traffic. So we're over on Ahrefs and we'll let you go ahead and create an account so you can sign in. And once we do, I wanna walk you through this. Now Ahrefs is actually pretty powerful and there are a lot of different things that you can do for your website. For instance, you can do a site audit, you can track your keywords to see where they are ranking each week, and you can also do some content explorer or site explorer and that's perfect for competition spying on your competition or looking at your competitors to see what they're doing that's actually powerful and that'll be something we'll cover in a different video but for this one let's just go to the keyword explorer tool and with the keyword explorer tool it's looking at different databases and pulling back what the average monthly search volume is for these different databases and what do i mean by that First, you have Google, which is the largest one and what we'll be using today. But if you're doing videos and you want to see what the going search volume is for some YouTube, some, for some keywords on YouTube, then you can look at YouTube. You also, if you're doing FBA or any kind of selling on Amazon, you can look at the keywords on Amazon. Then we also have Bing, Yahoo, and a few more here. So we're going to stick with Google because that's what we're working on. So when you're doing keyword research, one of the first things that you'll probably want to do is just put in a what we call a seed keyword or what maybe your main topic of your website is going to be about. And this can be whatever it is that you want. For the sake of this video, I'll just put in camping. And just know that's a very broad keyword, but it's used to show you what I'm talking about. So we'll take a look at everything. And what this is doing is it's going out and fetching all the information that Ahrefs has in its database based on the Google search results. And right here you have a keyword difficulty score. This is great for knowing just how difficult or easy this keyword might be for you to rank. And each software has their own ranking. And there have been some studies that the keyword difficulty that Ahrefs puts out is actually pretty accurate. And what this means is if you want to rank for camping, that can be a little difficult. And you start to see that it goes from green and then as it progressed up, it would be more into the orange and red area. But you would probably want to get at least backlinks from several different websites in order to rank for this keyword. So this part is a pretty good tool. Just understand that these are all estimations. So go with a grain of salt with all of this. But then you also have the search volume. This is the estimated monthly search volume here. And then you can see that there's a graph to tell you when, if it's seasonality, if it's a seasonal keyword, which you can see that there is a bit of seasonality to camping. So this is the search volume for US. And if you're in a different country, you can actually click on the search volume for your country and you'll get that there. Another great thing about Ahrefs is if you're not sure about anything is just hover over these little question marks and you'll get a little pop up telling you exactly what you're looking at. And then this is the estimated clicks that the first 
position on Google will receive a month if they're at the top. So scrolling down, you'll also see a little bit more if this if camping wasn't the parent topic or the main topic in this topic area, then it would give you the parent topic. For instance, if we did tenting, you know, or tents or hiking, then camping would probably be the parent topic, but we're actually at the parent topic, but that's pretty good. And then you'll also see who's ranking number one for this right here. And then here are some keyword ideas that you can look at, and we'll look at this in a minute, a little bit deeper. So scrolling down a little bit more, you get a better idea of the search engine position and the history for camping. And basically this is what these websites are ranking for. You see, there's a lot of volatility for camping. And all that means is that you have several of them that are staying up here and then they're going down in the rankings. This gives you a basic overview of that. Down here, this is the overview. This is basically pulling exactly what Google is showing for the search engine results for this keyword. And these are the sites that are ranking on page one for camping. This also pulls in the other things that Google has on the search engine results. You notice lately, there will also be this area where people also ask and it brings in these other questions that people are asking. I'll show you what that looks like here. This is what that's also pulling in. So it gives you a really good understanding of what the main results for Google looks like here. So let's take a look real quick on some of these. Obviously this is the search result and this is the actual page that is ranking on Google. Here we have some items that are specific to Ahrefs and how they're judging a website based on a few of their internal ranking structure. Basically, you have Ahrefs ranking, and that's basically Ahrefs is saying how authoritative this site is based on backlinks and popularity and things like that. So that's for the whole website. So that's Ahrefs ranking. Then you also have a domain ranking, and that's basically how, for instance, REI ranks in Ahrefs eyes. And this is how authoritative this domain is. And the higher the number, the more authoritative it is. So you see most of these are very high in the rankings for camping, and it would be a very difficult task to rank number one for this simply because you're going up against really big sites. And then you also have a URL rating or a UR rating, and that's just simply the rating of the particular page. So you've got the domain, the home page, like rei.com has a certain rating. And then if they create new pages, they will have their own rating structure simply because a new page may not have the same authority as the main site. Not to get too detailed into that, just understand that the biggest thing about here is with Ahrefs looking at this and the backlink structure and things like that, these are pretty authoritative. So we'll want to probably dig down into this topic a little bit deeper to find keywords that we'll be able to rank for. Backlinks, that's the number of external websites that are linking to this particular page. So you see that here. And then the number of domains. So you can have multiple backlinks, but the, you might have several backlinks from the same domain. And that's what it's showing you here. The traffic is the estimated traffic that Ahrefs is saying that this particular page gets a month. And the keywords is the number of keywords that this particular page is ranking for. So meaning it doesn't, it, it ranks for camping, but then it also ranks for 164 other keywords besides camping here. And then you see the volume of the top keyword here. So it's a really good breakdown, but it also gives you a good idea of, okay, so you can, this is a really good way to think about, you can rank for multiple keywords and that will stack how much traffic you might be receiving because each keyword has its own monthly traffic estimates. So that's a good overview of camping. And then since this is the topic we wanna go into, let's look at some of the keywords that we want to possibly write content for. One of the first things I like to do is actually come up here and go to questions. And this will pull in all the questions that people type into Google about camping. And you see there are a lot of keywords here on this topic. And that's way too many for us to even look at. 
Not to mention, we see that we're getting a little high in some of the competitive difficulty. And so one of the things I love about Ahrefs is I can filter down and make this a little bit more manageable list. So we'll do that here. So as you're going through and looking at what keywords you can rank for, what topics you want to write about, a couple of things I want you to do is we'll go in and filter. The first thing I'll filter on is the keyword difficulty. If I'm just starting out with a website, I like to keep the keyword difficulty at 30 or below. So let's type in 30 and that way it'll only bring back all the keywords where the maximum keyword difficulty is 30. And that should bring down our volume of keywords, which it does. We only have 538 to work with, which is a little bit more manageable, still a little bit high, but if you're only doing the seven days, that might be all that you need to work on this. Now I said 30, but also when you're first, first starting out, even think about doing 10 to 15 as the keyword volume as the number one topics that you start to write about. So if you're just starting out, you might want to go in here and just adjust the keyword difficulty to zero and maybe just start with the zero. The next column is the volume and that's the number of searches that this particular keyword gets a month. Now, some people, they like to just go off of something like 500 or more. Don't be distracted by the volume because that can be a little misleading. So if this is a really good topic to cover in your website, don't be afraid to do it and don't be afraid to write about it, especially if it's important for your readers. And you know, with the keyword difficulty, it shouldn't be too difficult for you to write something and possibly rank quicker than writing something on a keyword difficulty of 30 or higher. And then over here, what you can do is if you wanted to go into the search engine results a little bit deeper, you can do the same thing here. And what this will do is we'll go out and grab the top 10 items in the search engine results for this particular topic. So then here you can look at the domain rating for this is the number one is 16. So that's kind of interesting. It's above Reserve America, which is a very authoritative site. And it's also above Quora. So you also have 12 and 14 and six. So this is a really good question that you could write about and possibly rank fairly quickly. You see, you won't have to create any backlinks for it in order to rank. So it's something to look at for your site. So I kind of like to do that with the first several that I'm going to write about, see just how difficult might it be for me to write about this and for me to rank. One of the other great things about this is once you have your keyword set, we can export this and you can export the first thousand rows and that would be perfect for you. You have, in our case, we'll have 583 keywords that we can write about for the next year or however long. We can save it and we can use it in Google Sheets or Google Excel. So that was a general overview of how I use Ahrefs to do keyword research for a website. If you're interested in learning more about how to do SEO or search engine optimization for your website, then click on the like button and go ahead and click on the bell so you'll be notified of all the upcoming videos in this series. And thanks for tuning in.